given as a gift to the nations, a mandate to spread the gospel of grace in spirituality and excellence. He is an apostle's apostle. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall think about it day and night. For then you shall make your way prosperous. Hey Joshua, I'm not the one that determines your success. You will make your way prosperous by changing what's on your inside. It will bring boldness to you. It will bring confidence to you. You will start seeing yourself differently Joshua. When you allow the word of God to enter into you. God, your heart with all diligence. Ruth Smith and the Anointed One appointed to spearhead new heights in the kingdom god's own instrument of mass hell exodus a kingdom builder and the father of the takeover generation separated to reconcile the glory of the latter to mankind the senior pastor of the commonwealth of zion assembly the reverend biodo We celebrate you. From east to west, there is no other God. Oh, from north to south, I say there is no other God. Father, if this is a show, you know. If we are real before you, you know. There is no point pretending because we are transparent before you. Father, there's one thing that is sure. Even if we worshipped you from now till tomorrow, it's nothing to hold a candle near your faithfulness in our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Cause I celebrate you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grab someone's hand. Grab someone's hand. Tonight, Father, we have a short time to share. But may it please you that within the confines of time we have, lives will not remain the same. Amen. Maybe someone here came to hear music, which is okay. But Lord, take it to another level. Amen. The Bible says when Jesus spoke, 
the people noticed that something moved in their heart. On the way to Emmaus, they said, was our heart not hot within us when they spoke to us? I do not desire theatrics. I do not even desire to speak with eloquence alone. But I desire the pricking of the heart tonight. That both the preacher and the speaker will not remain the same. Both the speaker and the hearer will not remain the same. In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis 11.31. Hallelujah. So Genesis 11.31 says, And Terah took his son Abraham and his grandson Lot. And the son of Haran is daughter-in-law Sarai and his son his son's Abraham's wife and they went out with them from the of Chaldees to go to the land of Canaan and they came to Haran and dwelt there and verse 32 says so the days of Terah were 205 years and Terah died in Haran I want you to look at verse 31 we're going to read the last part we're going to read the last part. The Bible says, and they went out from the awe of, let's read the message translation of verse 31. Hallelujah. The last part says, and they set out with them from the awe of the Chaldees, from the, for the land of Canaan. So in case you're not paying attention to my text, they left a city called Chaldee, or of Chaldee. They were headed for Canaan. But when they got as far, I love the message translation today, as far as Haran, they settled there. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to overcome the details of destiny. Say, it's time to overcome destiny details. Amen. Be seated. This text I read to you is, the, is a very sad description of destiny. Very, very, very sad. Because destiny is the root word for destination. Or let me say we got the word destiny from. Destination. This man called Terah was the father of Abraham. We, we, we didn't hear much about Abraham's father. <clears throat> Apart from the fact that he described that he left their village <clears throat> called the of Chaldees. These guys were idol worshippers. They worshipped mountains. In fact, the word Abraham means the father of heights because they used to worship mountains and worship all those elemental gods. So he headed for Canaan, a place of God's promise. At this point in time, there were no giants in the place. And God knew he had put a land flowing with milk and honey in a certain place. And the destiny of his generation was supposed to be there. God is a planner. God knows your end from the beginning. God will make you choose a man to marry today who doesn't look like it. He might not even look like it for years. He might be the child in his loins. The combination of both of you, God needs it to produce something genius to the face of the earth. Never look at anything God is doing from the surface. The Bible talks about Jesus Christ being filled with the seven spirits of God. In the book of uh, Isaiah chapter number 11, the Bible says, He will not judge with the seeing of the eyes or the hearing of the ears. Don't be looking at things from the surface anymore. Look beyond the supreme miracle. There is a God that sees the end from the beginning who moved into Terah's heart. I don't know what was happening in this guy's life. He had lost one of his sons. There was a shaking in his life. When you see a man migrating in those days, they were not settled. They were dealing with stuff because people didn't like to migrate in those days. To move from one place to another in those places was a risk. Passing through someone's village, they could think you were coming for war. They could hit on you. It, there must have been problems before this man moved. But when he got to Haran, Haran was not the place he was headed. He settled in Haran. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This man lived 205 years in a place he wasn't supposed to be. And he died there. Canaan is the place of God's destiny. Canaan is the place of God's provision. Canaan is that place that heaven wired him for. But somehow he got to a place like going to live to, 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 to Benin from, from Lagos and then you go to Ore, where you are supposed to just park, refill your car, eat, buy bread, or sit in the car if you don't have money. <laughs> Wash your face, buy pure water, rinse your mouth. And before the new war was happening, they found that one, one seat was empty. This man parked where he was just supposed to stop. Tap your neighbor and say, don't drop your bag right now. Come on, tap your neighbor and say, keep walking. You're not there yet. The word destiny means a destination. There is a destination for you. You are not here by happenstance or circumstance. You are here on a purpose for a purpose. There is not one single person in this place without a destiny. I don't care how people have misused you, malhandled you, and abused you. I don't care what it is you lack in life. You do not lack destiny. There is something God has brought you here to come and do. You are on a journey. You are on an assignment. How tall you are, how short you are, the, the, the tone of your voice, the texture, your temperament. I like to say this with your finesse, your panache, your machismo. Everything about you was wired for your destination. That is why you don't notice what I notice. That is why what you notice do not cut my fancy. Because what you were wired for and your life's assignment is totally different from my life's assignment. Everything was made with that in mind. So he left the place that was supposed to be God's best for him and packed in another place. In Jeremiah 29, 11, very risky to quote a scripture that people know. They don't pay attention. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. See, the Lord. The thought of peace and not of evil. Because God doesn't tell you there will be giants in Canaan. He just tells you about the milk and honey flowing. So he says, listen, beforehand, my thought is not to put you or bring you to evil. It's to take you to an expected end. Newsflash. When you landed on earth, God had an expectation. You're not just a figure in the census. God had an expectation. Some people, when they do stuff and they just make money, they say, huh? She better said I will not make it. You didn't come here to make money. If you were in the center of God's will for your life, you will make money. You will do well. But the enemy could distract you with money. Money is not all there is. And sometimes God will give you a tool called money to fructify your vision, to make a reality your destiny. Some people will face that money and abandon their destiny. There are lots of people that if they had more money, they'll be out of ministry today. I'm not saying it to spite anybody. I talk to people. There are lots of people that if the Lord increased them, the more. You're playing drums for church. If God gave you one billion, would you still be playing drums? There are people that God is seen to their affairs that they should not make it. <laughs> and you may think I'm not a new creation person. You may think I don't know what I'm talking about. The price God paid for your soul is too much for him to let go. God doesn't advance you beyond what you can handle. A lot of people don't have capacity. They miss it if they are more blessed. You're sitting down there thinking you're a good Christian. You don't even have money to rent a hotel in Abuja. And you say you're a good Christian. You don't know yet. When you have the money to do anything all over the world, then I can tell that you're a Christian. Some things don't tempt you yet. So God knows your capacity. God knows my capacity. And God will not give me what will destroy me. In Jeremiah 1 and verse 5, 
I want to read the Amplified Version of Jeremiah 1 verse 5. It said, before I formed you. Please, I wanted to see the two yous here. I like to set a foundation so that the other things I will say will sit on the right foundation. There are two yous here. Before I formed this external person that people meet, I knew somebody on your inside. The word knew is the word yada. The same word used for worship. That's where we have Judah. The same word used for intimacy between husband and wife. And Adam knew Eve. God says, I have fellowship with you. I didn't just know you in my mind. I didn't just figure that someone would live. No, I related to you. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, to every purpose under heaven, time is attached. So all of us were with God in the spirit. All of us. When the Bible says to everything, including you, to including you, when it comes to under heaven, time is attached to every purpose of God. So when it was time for Adam to do his portion, God told Adam to move. When it was time for Moses, Moses is your time. All of us applauded him, waited for him to come back. When it was your time, God told you to move. But you know what? God saved you for this time. And guess what? God doesn't stop big. God saves the best for last. I don't care how gigantic in proportion your challenges. God knew what he put in you. You are able to survive in this evil world. He understood everything that will happen at this time. When Jesus Christ was leaving, one of the things he said was, when I come back, will I meet faith? Why did he make that statement? He knew the internet will come. He knew that you know, social media will come. He knew people would not read their Bibles anymore. He knew that several things will happen that will make it difficult. But he wired you for such a time as this. It's just that you're not tapping into what he has made available to you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. So before I formed you, I knew you. One was known. One was formed. In fact, if you look at the beginning... God did two types of creation for man. God created man out of nothing, and then God created man out of the dust. Two, two people. After I made him out of the dust, he breathed the breath of life. A life-giving spirit entered man. Are you following what I'm trying to say? So there was a you that he knew before he formed the one outside. But look at what he said to the one outside. He said then, look at that, look at that verse 5, amplified version. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and I approved you as my chosen instrument. Before you were born, I separated and I set apart, consecrating you and I appointed you to be a prophet to the nation. For Jeremiah, he was a prophet. For you, you might be a politician. For you, you might be a banker separated. For you, you might be a doctor separated. Don't equate making of money as fulfilling destiny. Don't be carried away. You are sitting down feeling sad. What's happening to you? I just don't know where my life is going. Is that where the Lord wants you to be? That's how people have cancer and die. That's how people just go places and just get into some mess. You see, that destiny is the path. That's why the Bible says the path of a just, not the road. The path. On that path, your wife is there. Your friends are there. Everything you, if you appear on someone else's path, every door you knock, they were not expecting you. That's the danger of missing your destiny. That's why you have to be very, very careful. That's why in all he did, he made sure the Holy Spirit was here. Remember, I'm sharing with you on overcoming destiny detours. What are detours? A detour is a different or a less direct route to the place of your destination. A different or a less direct route to a place of your destination. And you see, they use the word detour. A detour is taken when there's problem. If you've lived in Lagos before, there's a serious, not, not uh, traffic, traffic jam. Old down, not old up. Locked down. So you turned and turned and turned and turned. Very tough to just take a detour in Lagos if you don't know who you're following. One day we were going to Alaba to buy equipment and uh, a man just turned right. I told my taxi driver, turn, turn. 
I thought he wanted to pause. He turned right, we followed. He turned left, we followed. He turned right, we followed. He turned left, we followed. He just appeared in front of his gate. <laughs> Short cut might become longer cut. If you are trying to cut corners. So a detail happens when there is a problem. There are lots of people that when you look at their life from the area view, they're like rivers. They hit a mountain, they bend. 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 Their life is like that. They don't have a straight road. Those who understand destiny know that they may meet a mountain. They blast it. They blast it. Are you all still here? Because everything you need to get to where you are supposed to get to was placed on your inside before you were born. But what has limited you has been the things people told you, the, the people you walked with, the information you received, your treasons, axioms, the things you embrace, and the things you believe, and the things limiting you. But I pray today that in the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord, the almighty God that made you, that knew why he made you, will bring you back on track. Amen. Can I hear your email? I thunder. We are two sets of people in this place. First set are people that have made up their minds that no matter what happens, they are going to fulfill their destiny. And nothing will take them away from the part of their destiny. There is nobody that does not like honor. Even Satan likes honor. Satan likes honor. Everybody does. I do not pray that I will be dishonored in this church. But if I came to this place and nobody greets me, nobody receives me, I will still come. If nobody says hi to me at the door, I will still come. Because I have a bigger reason to be here than anybody. Tap your neighbor say, I know the thing. Say, I was born for this. Say, I don't need to tell you, but I know what the this is. Say, I was born for this. It doesn't matter those who don't say hello to you. It doesn't matter those who don't accept you. It doesn't matter those who don't receive you. You were born for something. And do not think you are not going to have impediment in fulfilling what the Lord has called you to do. A lot of people cringe. They are very jittery. They are very fearful. They are very timid. And God says, I have not given you the spirit of timidity. If God has not given it to you, where did you get it from? The righteous is as bold as lion. Oh, yeah, God told you the end from the beginning, but he didn't tell you the middle. But he told you the end so that you can keep that end in focus. So they brought the report back and said the land we went to, the sons of Enoch were there. One report. They were big. One report. We were like... Grass, we were like grasshoppers beside them. One report. The other report did not talk much. But brought grapes. That two people needed to put a stick in the middle to carry. So a grape. Luscious grape. Gigantic grape here. They didn't even bring the giant. They only spoke about the giant. You are seeing the grape here. This ought to be your focus. This ought to be your focus. The giant came up. And threatened. Goliath threatened. David said, who is this guy? Goliath spoke. Everybody heard, but David did not listen to Goliath. You know what David listened to? What shall be given to the man that bring this guy down? You know why? David was destiny conscious. Do you know why? One day he was minding his business in the bush. They told him to come. He said, let me wash my hand. They dragged him. The major prophet in the nation had said he would not sleep until you, until you came. He came to the place. Some of you don't know that David was not just anointed because Samuel wanted to anoint him. Even Samuel said, he looked at Eliab and said, this is the anointed of the Lord. He missed it for the first time. But you see, in those days, the horn that Samuel got, when the Lord said to him to fill the vial with oil, that vial, that horn, each time he wanted to anoint somebody, he would take the horn near the person. If the person was the anointed, the oil would bubble up. Took it to all the sons, it didn't bubble. Here came this boy that they even forgot, and the oil bubbled. All the brothers knew that he was the anointed. They poured the oil upon him, 
and anointed him not as a shepherd. They anointed him as king of Israel, but they sent him back into the bush. You know what happened to him? Before the oil came upon him, lion did not attack him. Bear did not attack him. The anointing is like magnet. He can see, you put a magnet down, even sand will come near it. Nails will come near it. Anything is an attractor. It attracts everything. That's what some of you don't know. It attracts, ev not some things, everything. Suddenly, this guy began to attract lion. They wanted to kill him. I was in the same place before. But guess what? He just kept looking for that day. Thinking, okay, now I know where I'm headed. That's my destiny. But how shall these things be? So the moment they told him, number one, whoever kills Goliath will marry the daughters, the king's daughter. He knew that that was a route that God wanted to take him into that place. <laughs> Have you ever been there when you know where you are headed? You know that you know that you know that you know that you are anointed for that thing, but you are not there yet. Can I have a witness, somebody? You know what you carry, but you're not there. You're not there. A smart person will be looking for opportunity. Listen to me. Your next level is wearing overall, called work. It's wearing. There are giants there that you need to bring down. God is not bothered about giants. God knows he has anointed you as a giant slayer. Look at your neighbors and be careful with me. I slay giants. Say, I don't go for small business. I don't go for small things. Come on, come on. Say, I start small, but I dream big. You don't have things in life because you deserve them. You have things because you demand them. There are lots of things we are dealing with that you have no business dealing with, but because you do not. Between amen and manifestation, I give glory to God. Someone out, push them out by your excellence. Push them out by your good results. Study like it, pray like it. Where you are doing your masters and your PhD. The Lord God is son. He projects you. And in shield, he hides you. He will give grace and glory. But guess what? No good thing will he withhold from you. If he's withholding it, it's not good. two sets of people here. The first set are those who have made up their minds that they're not going to take a detour from their destiny. But we have some sets that are already out of line. Distracted by several things. If you've not been listening to me, listen to me close. Satan will strategically set details on your way. You will have legitimate reasons to take a detour. Legitimate reasons. The Bible says when we see Satan at the end, they will bring him out. You will see how tiny he is. And all of us will yell in a chorus, see he that deceives the whole world. They didn't say the whole world sheepishly followed him. They were deceived. They did not know. So it's smart to thwart people. It's smart to make people relax on their path of destiny. Just look at yourself and say, you know, I can't die. I've tried. Even God knows I've tried. And you slow down. And there is overtaking in life. It distracts people. Gets people diverted. And it has made a lot of people to derail from the path that God set them on. One of the things why the church, one of the reasons why the church is under attack worldwide is that you couldn't be connected to a true house of God and miss your destiny. In fact, if you're connected to a true house of God, it will determine the quality of life with which you go to heaven. Remember when Jacob in Genesis 28 got to a place? He said, this is surely the house of God and what? The gate of heaven. Because the house of God is the gate of heaven. You are not in heaven physically, but you are the gate. And the house you belong to Determine how you get there. How you, whether you get there broke, whether you get there divorced, 
whether you get there in regret, having raised children the wrong way, it is what you are listening to and the grace that you sit under that determines how you get there. If you don't believe me today, keep breathing. You'll believe me later. So there are a few things that the enemy use to cause detour on people's destiny. Number one, time pressure. Time pressure. The man by the pool Bethesda in John chapter number five. There's a pool called Bethesda. The angel of the Lord will come there to stare it once in a while. Whoever jumped inside will be healed. So this man had heard about it. He said, ah, I, there's a solution for my situation. He packed his small bag and left. And he told his neighbors in three days, I'm a strong man. I'm a go-getter. Nobody will get into that pool before me. In three days, I'll be back. This man ended up living for 38 years in that place. Everybody starts things with zest, enthusiasm, with zeal, with, 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 with a kind of drive. But you see, after a while, when things don't work, people who have professed Christ sometimes become something else. The Bible says the Lord should help lest the righteous put, his, put forth his hands in iniquity. Because there are lots of people that are not solid. They are not planted. They are not established yet. Are you here today? You have thought what the Lord has told you. Maybe God told you to move to Abuja. God told you to get married. God told you to start a company. I don't know what it is that God has told you to do. You've thought, okay, it's, it's, it's just explode. That is the reason why your pastor tells you his story all the time. We left Ilorin Church. We moved to Abuja. I can never forget the day we drove to that gate. We didn't even know where to turn to. I was so full of faith. After two months, I took my wife to Sedi Plaza. I sat her down after a Sunday service. I said, sweetheart, when did we move here? She said, take it easy, sweetheart. I said, because I don't understand what's going on here. Ask anybody that is at any level of success. They didn't drop there. They climbed there. You have to learn how to have resilience in the spirit. How to keep hitting a spot till you have a break. You just hit, pah, it's not working, you drop it. Pah, it's not working, you drop it. There is nothing that can have a worthwhile result that you don't have to wait on it for a while. You are here. There, here, there, here, there. Those who are planted are the ones that, are, that will flourish. Plant two grains in a place. Plant in another place. Be uprooting one, planting, uprooting, planting. Plant them in the same day, on the same day. Be uprooting one and transplanting, replanting and transplanting. The one you left will do better than the one you're uprooting every day. You have to know exactly where you're headed and set yourself on that path right now. Because it will take time. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Time is one of the things the enemy used. For 38 years, the man despaired. By the time Jesus came, he was not even excited to, he was not excited anymore to be healed. You know what he did? He said, will you, Jesus said, will you be made whole? He said, oh, well, I, don't, I don't have any man. I don't have any man. He began to complain. He was bitter about life. You will be bitter when you allow a duration of time to get you disillusioned. For 13 years, a little boy called Joseph, who when he was minding his business, God kept showing him that he would rule the nations. He would do this, he would do that. And then his brother sold him. And then he found himself as a slave. Found himself in the prison. He was in the prison for 13 years. No record that Joseph was bitter. Anytime the joy of the Lord was a strength. Every minute. You know what happened to him? Even in jail, the chief jailer told him, Joseph, when you're ready to sleep, here's the key of the jail. Lock it. Even in the jail, he was in charge. He refused to be bitter. Did you know what happened? Listen to me, guys. When Pharaoh sent two of his, um, of his guys to the prison 
and he gave a prophecy to one that he was going to die. The other one was going to be restored. That one got there and still did not remember him. Are you here today? You are bitter. I helped that person. They didn't remember me. I helped that person. They didn't remember me. Listen to me. God didn't choose that they should remember you. If God doesn't want to use them for you, focus on your part of destiny. Let me say this to you. That process of waiting is building muscles on your inside. You've seen a chicken on a rooftop. Three story building. Goes, comes down and lands. And starts to run. You say, whoa. A man can't even do that. The man will break his legs. That chicken. You know when he began to build? When he was trying to come out of the egg. Have you seen the chicken? You will pity the chicken. It's struggling. Don't help it. Don't help it. Some of you, are, you've messed people's destiny up because you help them when they're not supposed to be helped. And I need to break this down so you don't get me wrong. Some of you are here in Abuja. Your younger brother is 35 years old. I'm, how old did I call him? 35. You're running the other hey, My younger brother has to feed. He has to feed. They're calling you Messiah. You are feeling cool. You have a low self-esteem. I'm telling you, you need to buy airtime after the service. Pull a call through to your brother. Say, by now, you should be responsible. By now, you should be responsible. You are, you are feeding what the Lord is not supporting. You are feeding laziness. Have you really sat him down to have a true talk with him? People go through process. Don't get me wrong. But you will know someone who is going through the process and you know someone that has settled in Haran. You are settled. You are settled thinking you are the Messiah. And you are feeling cool because they are clapping for you. You are doing what you are not supposed to be doing. There's pressure on me from home. It's okay when you have teenagers. It's okay when you have little people. You have aged mother. But not... The, the, the strength is the emblem of a young man. He's using his prime time to be waiting for you. And you two, you are doing things against the Bible. Doing things against your conscience. To service a boy that should be responsible. You must know how to manage your parents. Their expectations are high. Know how to manage them. Listen to me. There's a risk set before you that is not set before another person. Just make sure you are on track. People, people, who, people who are under the pressure of time begin to compare themselves. Those who compare themselves with themselves are not wise. You are putting your under, husband under pressure. Serious pressure. I want to deliver my baby in America. Nothing is wrong with that. But can you avoid it? Can you avoid it? In case you don't know what I'm talking about, where I'm from, when they want to say a fault, they will say avoid. <laughs> Tap your neighbor say, can you avoid it? <laughs> Number two, what's the first pressure? <laughs> Number two pressure is peer pressure. Peer pressure. When you suddenly wake up one morning and say, see, oh, see all my friends, they're married. See all my friends, they have children. See all my friends. Even after having children and having husbands, their, their husbands are well to do. See all my friends. Pressure. 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 Listen to me. If you are not where you are supposed to be yet, let me give you a trick. Stop going to parties. Stop going to parties. For now, face your job. Sometimes you look at the accomplishment of others and you say, ah, this time around, they are not even your contemporaries in your career. You look at a younger person. Now you are about 35, 37, and you see all these younger folks in IT, 22. They're certified. Everything. Pa, 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 pa. When, when you guys meet and they say, oh, have you... You say, this thing is not possible. Say, have you heard about this? Have you heard about this? Let's go this route. Let's go this route. You are shaking. You're like, hey, hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not too late. Let me top three people. Tell them it's not too late. Come on, say, don't be intimidated. It's not too late. 
It's not too late. Abraham started to have children at 99. Oh, you tell me, come on, Pastor Bill. Those are Bible days. All right. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an individual called Julia Child. She wrote a book at age 49 that sold millions. It's called Mastering the Art of French Cooking. Google it. 49. A lot of us here are not 49 yet. And you have, you've given up. You, you, you've let go. You can't. There's more. Listen to me. There are things I will still do that some, so a lot of people that are close to me have no idea about. There are things that I will still do. I see myself sitting on boards. Major boards. I'm taking what we've done here to the secular. I'm telling you, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I, I, I see myself starting a major hospitality, you know, stuff, group. I see myself doing a lot of things. I'm very, very young. Tap your neighbor say, I'm still very, very young. You're not talking the way I wanted you to talk. Say, I'm still very, very young. Come on, say, time is on my side. Leonardo Da Vinci was 52 when she complete, when he completed the painting of Mona Lisa. 52. I don't have time to give you a lot of accounts. There's a lady that is 80 years old. Some of you have seen her on the social media. She has muscles. She's very healthy. And you will see this popular picture of hers beside, you know, I think she's 82. They'll put her beside another 82. And that other 82 is like this. She's, you know, she's squared up. I read a story. When she was 40, she was sick. Her health was not in place. She, she had not started to build. She started building at sometime around 42. Tap your neighbor and say, it's not too late. Not say, don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Huh? You see people that are my age, they've let go. They are papa, papa. They've let go. Don't let go. Come on. There is more. Hallelujah. <laughs> Richard and Morris McDonald's started McDonald's, but it didn't explode onto the major crock. Who at age 52 brought an idea how to make McDonald's a chain? Started the franchise side of it. There are things in the womb of your spirit. Don't let go. Look at somebody with the fire of God in your eyes. Look at them. Be deliberate. Say, there is more. Come on, say, there is more. It's not too late to start a company. It's not too late to get married. Some people are not looking for... Some people want to get married and they're not looking for babies that they're going to say, are you okay? Are you fine? Are you all right? Are you? They look, they're looking for people that are ready. They meet you today. In three months, they want to marry you. Because you've been made ready. They've been made ready. Are you following what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Pastor Biodo, I already have a child out of child, out of wedlock. I made a mistake. I don't think anybody, even single girls don't have, don't have the opportunities. How much more me? Some men are looking for those who already have. Yeah. I think they have more faith in this side, on this side. Yeah. Look at your neighbor, there's someone is looking for you somewhere. Come on, come on. Say, someone is looking for you somewhere. When David said he was going to bring down Goliath, his brother told him, I know you are thinking evil in your heart. You have come to see the battle. The Bible says he turned from him and turned to another. Tap your neighbor, say, turn from them and turn to another. If they don't like him, look, they move to Jikoi. If they don't like him, Jikoi, move to Asokoro. Somebody somewhere is looking for you. You are a solution to someone's problem. Let me run fast. Stop looking at the years you've lost. Start looking at what you've got left. It's never too late to be what you could have been. It's never too late to be what you might be. Or what you might have been. So the first one is what? Second one is what? Third one is word pressure. Word pressure. Are you allowing someone else's negative words to stop you? 
Some people have been bullied since they were born. They are going nowhere else. And they have seen that they don't have too much, they don't have too much gift. They just take one look at you and hate you. Do you know there are ladies that have been hated just for being tall? People just hate them. Just, what's, what's wrong with her? Particularly you're tall, you're not wearing heels. They just hate you. People have been hated for being intelligent. So what, what, what's wrong with him? He thinks he's the only brilliant person here, huh? huh? Your boss just takes one look at you and is intimidated and says things to you. Listen to me and listen close. If you've not been paying attention, pay attention now. I believe nothing written except the Bible. I don't know what someone wrote to you on social media. I don't know the email they sent to you. I don't know what they wrote about you. It was written to kick you out of your track, to make you have a low self-esteem, to make you think low of yourself, but take a chill pill and think about the person writing. Are they better than you? Anybody can rant. I believe nothing written except the word of God. Listen to me, even what, even what they wrote, they have an evidence to write it against you. Evidence is not the truth. So I told you that, I told you that um, I'm traveling to my wife's family. You heard, you heard when you came to my office. That's an evidence. And you knew the date. You knew I was flying. You, told, you now told someone that you are even the one that bought a ticket for me. You have an evidence. But that's not the truth. Because the person you told could go wait for me at the airport and see me there. He could see me. But the information you heard was what you twisted. That is why when it is tangible, it's no longer faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. But the evidence of what is not seen, faith is not evidence. Because if we have the evidence, we can see it. We don't need faith. If you are married, wave, wave your hands for me. Do you need faith to now get a husband, man? No. You now have. So that's no longer faith. So there are lots of things written. There are lots of beliefs. That is not the truth. I came to psych you and I told you that Pastor Dele is cheating you. Go take Go to that farm. Take, she just, she's going to send you away on Monday. Go take what, whatever it is on the farm and go. But I came to tell Pastor Dele, Pastor Dele, Richard is a thief. In fact, he's coming on Monday to steal. For Pastor Dele, she has an evidence and she thinks she knows the truth, which is the truth you are coming. For Richard, you have no But the person observing the two of them, we judge differently because you only know one part. You only know that part. But someone knows the two parts and knows that no. Even though Richard is wrong, he's not supposed to do that. Somebody did it. Somebody, do, somebody did it. So God in his mercy can do different things. He can arrive with the truth. Even though what you are seeing is what you saw and what you are seeing is what you saw. That's why God's vantage point is different. If you had the foundation some of those people you are talking about had, you'd probably be worse. God has that vantage point. That's not the truth about them. The truth is what the word says about them. Hallelujah. 
Tap your neighbor and say, let the word of God be the final authority of your life. <laughs> Whose words are you allowing to cause a detail in your life? Who came to speak to you? Who came to speak to you? Did you know that there are people that when they were in a relationship with someone, the person left them? And some people are wicked. They don't just leave you. They sow words into your destiny. You're just a broke guy. Okay? You're broke. You're dull. You're not intelligent. You see that other guy that is... I've not said yes to him because I don't double date like your father. <laughs> so, but I'm considering him because he's intelligent. Even at the first meeting, the guy was cool. Look, I pity your wife that will marry you. I didn't tell you something all this while. Your mouth stinks. <laughs> they leave you damaged. Could it be? Could it just be? And the reason why we say tell your neighbor something, you, you are, you are, you are pussy. <laughs> Somebody, tap your neighbor, say who did this to you? Who damaged you? Who? The Bible says in this world there are many voices and none of them is without significance. That person came to you like they love you and they give you an advice. What are you doing here? You are bigger than this place so you better think about your life. You better do this and do that. They should help you now. How many people have they helped? Where are they themselves? You should be able to pick in the middle of statements who is talking. Yeah. Go and study the temptation of Jesus. Jesus Christ was still having a conversation with the devil until he got to a level. He said, ah, get thee behind me. He says that it was not just his mind. He knew who was talking. Tap your neighbor and say, know who you are talking to. Come on, say, know who is talking to you. You have to take those words spoken to you and replace them with God's word. If you don't replace them, you will wear designers, you will drive good cars, but you are damaged. And that has affected a lot about you. don't trust nobody. You don't, you, 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 you don't get involved in things. You don't get connected to things because someone did something to you years ago. Tap your neighbor and say, get over it. Yeah. Say you have a destiny. The enemy wrote a script for you. I don't think, I don't know if I you remember me telling you the story about a carpenter that, that worked in a certain church in Ilori, when we were there, and he came to work on our stage. And I really liked him. There was a, this carpenter um, attended Deeper Life. The way himself and his colleagues did the work was excellent, and they were Christians. So we hosted them properly. And, you know, they just started talking to me that, wow, this is the best church they've seen in terms of the pastor being humble and all of that. I said, come on, what are you talking about? He said, he now pointed to a pastor who was my mentor. I said, I walked in his house. In fact, this, 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 this. I said, eh, don't talk about people here. I said, listen, you don't even know what he has been through. And I began to talk about things that he's been through. The guy looked at me and said, maybe the devil set that up to change his character. The devil has written a script for you. And you are acting exactly the way it's strategically orchestrated that you'll be taken out of the path of your des destiny. Tap your neighbor and say, I'm tearing that script this evening. <laughs> say, I'm not waiting till I even get out of this church. Say, I'm tearing it immediately. <laughs> Number four, people. People pressure. People pressure. It will use people to take you out of your way. Samson was, in fact, written as, I mean, the most powerful man in history. But a lady took him out. Who is dragging you out of the will of God? I tell you the truth, most people shouting have made mistakes before. People that you look at as perfect have made mistakes before. One of the tricks of the enemy is to say, you've already messed up, so don't, no, don't bother. Even if you forget, people have not forgotten. Just don't bother. Just keep doing it that way. No, 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 no. If a tree be cut down, it will blossom again. I said if a tree be cut down, it will blossom again. Don't let anybody take you 
out of the will of God for your life. It's time to align back on your, your part of destiny. T.D. Jakes was preaching one day and he said something that I can never forget. He said, at best, all the things you could get in life, at best, the best of men will reach 80%. The best of men will reach 80%. You know what the devil does? He looks for the 20% you don't have. Let me break it down so that you get what I'm saying. You're a guy, you, you have everything going for you, but maybe you're still trusting God for a level. Just everybody has that 20%. That is not there. Who says amen to that? Who can agree with me? Everybody has, so that you're not God. There's still something you're trusting God for. The devil takes that 20%. Brings it before your face every day and tells you your life would have been better if not for this 20%. <laughs> and you know what a lot of us do? We embrace the 20% and lose the 80. Why would you lose 80 to go for 20? It's an illusion. Don't let anyone or anything take you out of your path of destiny. Whatever it is, let me tell you something. You know, I told you this story. Um, a pastor said everybody should write their problems. Put it in an envelope. Put it on the stage. When you get on the stage, pick another person's problem. When people drop their problem and pick someone else's problem, say, please, bring my own back. <laughs> ah! My God! You don't know what people deal with every day. <laughs> Satan strategically put people on your path of destiny to take you out. Don't yield to that. If you're on the wrong path, I want to enjoin you as your pastor. Get back on track. It's time to grow and flourish. It's time. It's time to flourish. You shouldn't be wasting your time at this level of your life. It's time to be focused. Avoid distractions. Avoid detours. So why did Terra park? And Terra lived 205 years and ended up not getting to his destination. If you miss your purpose, I discovered that God will extend it to someone else. What Koza is doing in Abuja today, we are not the first church that God extended it to. I'm sure other churches didn't grab it or probably something happened. And please, Koza, what the Lord is using you for, don't let the Lord drop you for another church. Because God, you know what Jesus said? He expressed God's mind. He said, if you don't praise him, the stones will rise. There's always a replacement. When Vashti is messing up, Esther is warming up. I believe I have a lot of people here warming up for their destiny. One minute up to take over. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Verse 31 of Genesis 11 says, And he lived, he got as far as Haran, and settled there. And settled there. Tap your neighbor, say don't settle. Say don't let anything take you out of your destiny. See, a good car is lovely, and you know I drive one. It's very good, but don't let that take you out. Don't let designers, those things will follow you. Those things will follow you. They will follow you. They will follow you. That you will not even remember what you, you will not even re remember what you have anymore. They will follow you if you're on the path of destiny. I tell you the truth, if you're on the path of destiny and you touch people, people will touch you back. Goodness and mercy shall. So why are you following it? They should follow you. They should follow you. They should accompany you on your part of destiny. Am I talking? Yes. I want to close with this scripture. Genesis 12 and verse 1. We're going to read four verses. It shocked me when I realized that Abraham who was the son of terror. 
when Terah died, the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country. Now, Abraham was little, was a younger man when they moved to Haran. So Haran became his country. And from your family, and from your father's house, to a land which I will show you. Abraham did not know that it was not the first that God showed. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Look at that. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 4. And Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. God started with him because the purpose of the Lord has to come to pass. You might not be that you are continuing your, what your natural father did and it might not be that your child will continue what you're supposed to do. In fact, it's favor if your child can take it from where you are. But listen to me. Whatever God is asking you to do, if you leave the place, God will replace you. It's time. When you get to heaven, do you want to be told well or you want to be told well done? It's time to think about it. Anything taking you out of that position is not worth it. Is it anger? Is it resentment? The devil is strategic at doing this thing. Is it that somebody talked about you? I can't handle that. Me. God knows that my blood is hot. <laughs> what is it? I fasted. I did. I put my all in it, but I didn't see the result. Is it time pressure? Is it peer pressure? Is it that the time that you put into you thought by now you should have had a break? The Bible says, don't let us be really well doing. We will reap if we faint not. What if we fainted? Are we going to reap? The journey ahead of you is shorter than for you to turn back. It's time to get back on track. It's time. It's time. Eli did not sin against God. He just didn't tell his children the truth. And he entered God's trouble. They took priesthood from his family. I've told you, your blood is not against me. Your blood is not on my life. I've told you the truth. It's time to get back on track. I want everyone to bow their heads. I don't expect a fiery prayer here tonight. I expect a quiet time of consecration to say to the Lord, I'm very, very sorry to have allowed time, pressure, words of people to take me out of my place. The Bible says the way a bird wanders, so is a man that wanders from his place. I have a place in God. It's good to make money, it's good to be successful, but that is not why I'm here. There's an assignment. There was something I actually was born for. I wanted to consecrate yourself to the Lord again. Ask him to help you. Ask him to align you again. Come on, somebody. If you pray that prayer seriously, a time of refreshing will come. What you actually need will follow you. If you ever saw a soldier looking for a gun to fight for Nigeria, the person is a thief. Because God shall give you everything you need to fulfill your destiny. It's time to pray, somebody. It's time to pray. Pray a prayer of consecration. Ask the Lord to help you. If you need to be sorry, just tell him, Lord, I'm sorry. That step I took, that move I made, I'm sorry. I apply the blood of, I come under the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians 1, 3. I thank my God every time I remember you. This indeed is the state of our hearts concerning our partners and friends, who support us through their love gifts. 
your giving and prayers have made it possible for us to take the glorious gospel of Jesus to the ends of the earth. To partner with us, please visit partners.coza.org.ng. Email us through partners at coza.org.ng or call us with the numbers on the screen. Thank you for giving to the Lord. We celebrate you. Join our services in our different campuses or log on to www.kozanigeria.tv to stream our live services. For further information and prayer, please call the number on your screen. Thank you for watching. We celebrate you.